Hey guys, it's Andrew from Collective Intelligence and today I'm going to teach you guys how I make my video tutorials. Making video tutorials for Ableton Live can be a little bit difficult and the reason being is because it's actually quite hard to capture the audio output from your digital audio workstation, in this case Ableton for me. So there's a little bit of a trick to get the routing right. Um, if you're on a Mac computer, I don't think it's actually any easier. Um, so it's a little bit tricky either way. But what I'm going to do or what I'll start off doing is I'm going to quickly show you behind the scenes. So let's jump over to this view and you are about to see what is called open broadcast software. This is OBS and it is a software that allows you to do various things. So in this case, um, I'll talk you through the particular scene that we're looking at here. So we're on the Ableton scene um, and I've got um, a animation that's occurring in the sources that I can show you. So this is um, an animation that would play back on the screen as you can see. So that is one of the sources that's part of this scene. Um, I've got uh, a microphone, in this case, um, Ableton Audio. I've got a invisible thing that you can't see right now, but it just shows me the chat when I'm live streaming. Um, I've got Camlink, which is what my microphone, uh, sorry, my, my camera is plugged into. And then I've got my computer scene screen. So um, I'll just turn that off and we'll take a look at the cam first. So I use an Elgato cam link. And so you can see that that device is a cam link and I use a Sony um, camera. It's a A6500 and it's just a DS DSLR. Um, I've got it connected via an HDMI cable to the cam link, which has HDMI in and then USB on the other end that plugs into my computer. And I've also got a mini USB plugged into the camera at all times to give it power. So I don't have to worry about like charging the battery or whatever. It's always just plugged in. And then here I've got all of the parameters for the camera set up um, and I film the camera in 4K, um, but I don't actually render my videos out at 4K um, because it's not really that relevant yet, but I just do everything in 4K um, for now. And so what I um, then have going on is, yeah, the computer screen. So the computer screen is just capturing my display. So you just can make a source uh, inside of here. And you can select whether it's going to be like a, a display capture or whatever. And in this case, it is the display capture. So we can see that. And then I've got the cam link and that's laid in the area of the screen where the groove pull usually sits. Um, can you see that? Yeah, where the groove pull in Ableton sits. So if I turn off my camera, you can see the groove pulls underneath there. And I don't often use the groove pull, so I just put the camera over top of there because then otherwise everything fits really nicely once Ableton is full screen in front of me. Um, and then what else have I got? I've got um, audio going on, obviously. So I've got computer audio, which would be anything coming through from like a browser or Spotify um, and any like system sounds. Then I've got my microphone. And my microphone's just going into my audio interface. So I've got the device input. And in this case, I'm using the Steinberg. And what you can do is under filters, um, actually, I'll show you the filter that I've got on the camera first. So if I go filters here, I've got a little like color correction thing on my camera just to give it a little bit more like realistic colors to my eye. Um, so I turn that on. So a filter is just something that can be sort of laid over the camera. And then also you've got filters with, Audio. So I've got loaded in here a bunch of um, devices and their FabFilter plugins. So OBS can host um, VSTs. And in this case, I'm EQing my voice like so. Um, I'm compressing my voice like so. Um, so yeah, and so on and so forth. I've got a gate and then I've got a limiter to give me overall volume. Um, but I make sure that I'm not smashing the limiter because uh, we don't like that. And so that's everything that goes on the microphone. So each of these audio channels are recorded onto their own separate channels. And you can do that by coming into the advanced audio here. And you'll see that um, microphone is on channel one. 
My restream Ableton, which I'll explain in a minute, is on two. My voice meter Ableton's on four. And then my computer audio is on three. And then I've got all of them also going through to a six channel. And if I go into settings here, you'll see that my output is broken up into a bunch of different settings. I've got the streaming, which takes the sixth channel where everything is put together. And the recording takes one, two, three, four. And the reason I do that is because each file, in this case, I make MP4 files, each one has a separate audio track for microphone, Ableton sound, et cetera, et cetera. So if I wanted to um, rebalance the mix post the video being shot, I can do that. I have full control inside of Premiere Pro. Um, so that's really handy. But when I'm streaming, it just all goes through onto the one channel because I don't need to split apart. So um, that's how I've got that set up. So yeah, as you can see, I'm recording now. So this is going to be um, a file that Premi uh, that OBS will output. And that file, um, like I mentioned, is an MP4. And it's going to come out at um, 1920 by 1080 because I just recorded that. Um, so that's how I handle yeah computer sound, microphone sound, um, and I believe that if you're doing something like this, I just want to talk a little bit about the fact that when you're making a tutorial, um, I really think it's handy that I'm like actually here and talking to you um, and I can be very direct with you. And I think that that's great for the tutorial and that's great for the connection between student and teacher. And I think also something to mention is that because I'm dealing with music production, if I had poor microphone quality, I don't think people would take me so seriously. Um, so I make sure that I get good audio quality um, and every say month or so I actually go back in there and sort of readjust it to see whether I can't get it sounding any better because I'm always trying to improve everything every step of the way um, but I just you'll notice that uh, the dynamics of my voice it's it's pretty sort of stable and I need to make sure that that's the case because um, when I'm trying to talk over top of tutorials or I'm trying to talk over top of the music in the stream I just need to make sure that I always cut through and I'm not drowned out um, even though I can rebalance it in post-production it's much less work just to get it working in that one video file that I can just take into Premiere and edit it but so how do I get the audio from Ableton? There's a couple of ways and one of the ways is voice meter banana. And what voice meter does is voice meter allows me to basically set this up so that all of my system audio runs into it and then I can capture the audio here. Inside of Ableton, if I go into preferences, I would need to have voice meter virtual ACO set up as my audio device. Some downsides to this method um, would be there's latency issues um, as well as issues like um, if I'm trying to capture the audio uh, but I want to use Sonarworks on my output, then I cannot separate Sonarworks from um, the sound. So if I were to record a video that had Sonarworks, you would get my calibrated sound, which wouldn't sound right in your acoustic space. So there's a bit of a downside. Um, and plus, I just don't like using that sort of method, it just feels like I'm kind of plastering things together rather than things working intuitively and natively. But uh, obviously that's unavoidable and it's silly to kind of try and have a mentality where it. you don't work that way. But I found another great method. Um, so voice meta, there's plenty of tutorials teaching you how to use voice meta. So if that's the solution for you, go check it out. I'm not really teaching you how to use OBS, nor am I teaching you how to use uh, voice meter in this tutorial series. But the other thing that I have found recently is a plugin called Restream. Okay. So what I do with Restream is I can set my sound to just be regular um, the sound card, or in most cases, it's um, my ACO drivers for the RME that unfortunately I don't have here at the moment. But what, what you can do with Restream is you pop it on your master, you come into it, you set it up to send audio via a local broadcast. And what that does is it will shoot it out to another plugin that's going to receive that broadcast. And in this case, if we open up this, what this is here is actually a duplication of my microphone input. But what I've done is I've put a couple of gains on it that gain it down. So this is negative 30 decibels three times so that I've got absolutely no audio actually coming through from my microphone on this one. And then I load an instance of the plugin and I set it up to receive audio. So as 
Ableton is playing audio. You can see it comes through here. And if I open up here, we can see the plugin is active. And if I don't have it coming through twice, then we're not gonna clip the master. So what I've done here is now I can solve a great problem on my output of my master, okay? So once upon a time, like I was saying, all of the audio, if I was using Sonarworks, it was getting calibrated. Also, if I was trying to use DigiCheck, which is a frequency analyzer built into RME interfaces, as the audio would go through Sonarworks, it would have my room curve applied to it, which was not ideal because, like I said, in your acoustic space, that correction is not right. So what I can do is I can have Restream capture the audio, but I can mute it for what I can hear and I can activate a chain that has Sonarworks. So you hear it from here without Sonarworks applied and I hear it from here with Sonarworks applied. Another thing that I could also do is I could set up a max for live device called Altist and Altist can route the audio directly into RME, did you check? So I can get the analyzer functioning without the room correction applied to it. So that's been a real game changer for me because now I can make tutorials knowing exactly what I can hear in my room is right rather than trying to use headphones and figure out how a kick and bass can sound good on headphones. I just don't need the head headache anymore. So once I hit stop recording, I eject a file out into um, the uh, folder that I've got here and you'll see me here getting ready to film to it and, and take a look. Basically, I will take a file and I'll put it into Premiere Pro. And inside of here, you'll see one, two, three, four channels of audio. So they're the four channels that I described earlier, my microphone, my computer, and then the voice meter or the restream, depending on how I want to do it. And that gives me complete control over everything. What I generally do is I generally just use fade-ins. Okay, so welcome to Ableton. And then I use transitions when I may need to make little cuts because for some reason I've burped or something like this. I also just use a cross dissolve technique, which goes and like back to default. Under link and MIDI, where when it, you can't really see it, but there's just a little morphing effect was it when it lays across the two clips. And then here I just do every now and then I do do mild editing. So into the element. Oops, uh, would be the little help menu that you see down here. This is the out. info view, okay? And fade as I mouse in. over, and then finally at the end, I just do a fade out. So I use fades for everything. I think it just looks tidy and quick. Look at the browser. So once that is all done, I just eject that out of Premiere Pro and then upload it onto Ableton. Make sure that I've got all the right tags and everything going. And a cool way to ensure that is I've got this um, interesting plugin where I can actually look at somebody's channel. So Ola England, for example, and I've got um, something called Tube Buddy, and it will show me how inferior I am to Ola England in terms of the amount of views that I've had in the last 30 days. And then also the amount of subscribers that I've had in the last 30 days. And I can see what his keywords are. And I can also go to particular videos and I can see all of the analytics for that particular video and I can see what he's doing well and I can see what he's doing not well enough, right? And I can compare that to my own videos and I can make sure that I'm using the right tags. In this case, he's only using two tags, which is pretty crazy, um, but he's got momentum. So maybe he doesn't really have to worry about this sort of thing anymore. But ultimately, if you want to put stuff on YouTube, the best way to get it seen is if people like it and if people comment, and if people watch all the way to the end. So they're the most important metrics. Obviously, people subscribing is nice as well, because then you can build up a viewership, but mostly it's actual engagement with the video. So watching it all the way through, liking it, and commenting. So one last thing that I would say is that if you have a desire to teach people, you should do it. You should totally get out there and make tutorials, and teach people what you have to offer. Um, so finally, if you guys actually want to know how OBS works in more detail, go ahead and look up tutorials for it. 
Um, I learned how to do all of this flash, like animation stuff, purely through watching videos. Um, and right now, actually, I can just give you some really great, great, uh, if you want to improve your channel, watch this guy. He's really amazing. He shows lots of stuff on OBS. And if you want to be um, and inspired as well, this guy, Alpha Gaming, he makes fantastic videos. Um, and I've learned a lot from both of those guys. And they are why the channel has the production quality that it's slowly achieving now. So hopefully that was interesting for you guys. Go out and make some tutorials and I'll see you again in another video. Take care.